It's time to talk about masking. Clear parts, that is. Over the years as I've talked to people about masking canopies and clear parts, I find that generally people fall into one of two groups. It's either, yeah, I totally got this, or nope, 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 can't do it, can't do it at all. Um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of gray area in the middle of that task. Now, of course, back in the days when I was building pretty much nothing but aircraft, I masked canopies all the time. Um, I've masked hundreds of canopies in clear parts. Uh, it's something that I had to get comfortable with to be an aircraft modeler. And that, that process of, of learning different ways of doing it and trying different techniques showed me some things that work and also some things that don't seem to work. And masking clear parts is something that I actually get quite a bit of, uh, quite a number of questions about, uh, both just one-on-one -on -one talking with people, uh, through messaging, through emails, things like that. Uh, people will ask me, how do you do it? What are your recommendations? What do you use? What should I use? Um, why, why, why do we do this at all? <laughs> um, so I hear a lot and I get to talk with a lot of people and I find that what seems to hinder people the most uh, are, are things that can be lumped in two groups. The first thing just seems to be a, a lack of information. Uh, maybe they haven't done it before. Uh, maybe they've heard someone describe it, but they've not seen it demonstrated. Um, it's just, it's not that they don't want to, it's that they just don't have the information or maybe the tools and the materials to do it in a way that's not frustrating, a way that will give them success. And so because maybe they're trying to do it with less than optimal materials, they come away thinking this is a really difficult task. And when equipped with some basic information, some information about tools and equipment and things like that, they go back, they give it another try, and they say, hey, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. The other group, and as I talk to people, this kind of becomes fairly clear, fairly quick, is just what I'll call, for lack of a better term, careless craft. Um, it's not that they don't necessarily have the right information, the right tools, or the knowledge of how to apply it. It's just that maybe there's some finer points of doing it that they get a little careless on. They rush through it or they don't follow some, some basic rules that have to really kind of be in place to make it work well for you. And that process frustrates them. And again, with just a few simple pieces of information, they're usually able to go, oh, okay, I hadn't thought about that. And then successfully move on to masking their canopies and clear parts without any problems. So what I want to do in this video, this, this one right here, right there. Um, <laughs> why'd you do that? Anyway, things I want to do in this video are talk about some of the methods of masking and some tips that you need to think about regardless of what you're doing. And then some just general thoughts on the application of, uh, you know, how do you do this just every day when you're working on your models in a way that's not going to be frustrating. Now, I will warn you, I did shoot some demonstration kind of videos. They're not intended to be how-tos. They're just more background. So while I ramble on, um, they're, they're showing in the background. So if you're looking at them and you're going, hey, he's masking the same canopy over and over again. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Um, I just found a clear part and I used it to kind of demonstrate the very basics so that you have something to look at other than this. The first category of masking methods that I want to talk about are what I'm going to loosely call sticky methods, where you essentially stick something on the clear part and then cut away what you don't want to be there, and that's what gets painted. A very common method is to use some kind of masking tape. Uh, quite often the yellow hobby tape, Tamiya tape, there's other brands like that, is used. There's other tapes like that, but the, the basic method is you stick some tape on, burnish it down with a toothpick or something like that, and then use a knife blade to cut away what you don't want to be there. And what's left is the canopy framing, the, the clear part framing, and then you airbrush that. 
that's, that's a very common method. And it's a good method. I do use it from time to time, and I've used it many times in the past, and it does work. Now, it has some advantages. It's really cheap. I mean, you, if, you, if you build models, you probably have masking tape. So it's something that's easily accessible for most people. Uh, the drawback is it can be a little tedious, a little hard to see where the canopy lines are if the, the canopy framing is not real distinct. And if you leave it on there for just a little while, when you pull the masking away, it can leave a little bit of residue behind. Yeah, you can clean it up, but it's something that you have to factor in when you're deciding what method you want to use. Now, a variation of taping the canopy with some kind of masking tape is to use small bits of tape. Uh, and I've tried this a few times, and it, it does work. You, you cut up a section of masking tape into little squares and rectangles, and sometimes you even have to use triangles and little sections of curves. And you just apply small pieces of tape around the clear part so that it builds up everything that you want to be masked. It can be, it can be a good method because it's easily configurable. You can just continue to cut little pieces of tape as long as it takes to get something masked. Um, but that's also kind of its drawback. It does take a little bit of time. And it comes with the, the pluses and minuses uh, that I talked about with masking tape in general. It's real cheap, can leave some residue behind. So it, it does work and it works well. I think it works especially well if all of the angles of the framing are fairly sharp angles. If you've got a lot of curves and things like that, it can get a little tedious doing that. Another method, and, and one that I use more often than not now, in fact, I, I made a video about it right up here. So, um, but it's, it's using a material called parafilm. And this is just, uh, uh, it's actually for use in laboratories, but you just roll off a section of it, stretch it out, pull it over the canopy, burnish it down. It's really thin so that it conforms to the canopy framing really well. It's semi-clear, uh, so you can see what you're doing. You can see the canopy framing really easy, and it's very easy to slice. Um, you, can, you can slice through it uh, without too much problem, uh, pull away the excess, and you have your canopy masked. Now, while it's, it's cheap and easy to use, it's not quite as cheap as masking tape. Getting a roll of parafilm will be a, a reasonable one-time expense. I think it's $10, $12 for a roll of it. But a roll of it can last for years. Um, I used to build 30, 35 aircraft a year, and it would take me three or four years to go through one roll of parafilm. So its per-use cost is really low. Um, and it, it works really well. Uh, again, it's my preferred method. I like it better than all of these others. Now, a method that's similar to using parafilm is using a product called bare metal foil. And, and what this is, it's literally thin metal foil that's sticky on one side. And you cut off a section of it, you pull the backing away, you put it over the canopy, you burnish it down, and then you cut away the stuff you don't want to be there. It works really, really well because it, once you get it stuck down, it's not going anywhere without some effort. Um, you can get it off when you need to unmask it, but it's not going to be quite as loose as parafilm. The drawbacks to it are is on a per-use basis, it's much more expensive. Um, you get a few sheets of the, para, of the, uh, the bare metal foil in a package, and they're, again, I think I remember they're maybe $15, $20 a package but you get far fewer uses out of them than you would out of, say, masking tape or parafilm. And the other thing, I used to use this quite a bit. The main reason I stopped, and I don't know if this is just something about the way I stored it or something I was doing or the conditions I'm in, but over time, the sheet of foil, uh, when I first got it, it would be very smooth on the, the backing, but over time, it began to wrinkle and crack. Even if I just, you know, only cut off small sections and then put it back in the packaging 
and stored it so that it didn't have anything else touching it or pushing on it. Over time, it just seemed to degrade a little bit. It got a bit fragile and uh, just in some places would almost shatter. So I'm not sure what was going on with that. It was enough that I stopped using it and switched to parafilm. Now, all of those previous methods that I just talked about require you to put some material over the clear part, burnish it down really well, and then cut it away. Keep in mind, when you're cutting canopy masks, always, always, always put in a new knife blade into your hobby knife because there, there's, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to cut away uh, the, the masking and you've got a dull blade and it's, it's making imprecise cuts and it's dragging through it and it's pulling the masking up. Do yourself a favor. That tends to be the number one thing that when people contact me and they say, I'm trying this, but I'm having trouble with it. Honestly, that tends to be the number one thing that when I ask them, are you using a new knife blade? They'll say, no, I'm not. Does that matter? And I go, yeah, it matters a whole lot. Now, another sticky method of uh, applying masks to your clear parts is to buy commercial masks. There are companies that make masks of various materials. It's usually some kind of tape. It can be more masking tape-like. It can be, be more vinyl-like. But it will be pre-cut canopy masks that you can just peel off a part and stick onto the canopy. They work great with some caveats. One, there's the cost of it. If, if cost is something that's, that's, that you're really worried about, um, they're not super expensive by any means, but if every time you're building a model, if you're having to buy a commercial mask for it, um, that does factor into the cost. You have to add that in every time. But again, they're not super expensive, but it's a one-time cost. You, you've got to pay for that, and then the next model, you've got to do it again if you want to use those. They also have the drawbacks of whatever the material is. So if it's a, a commercial canopy mask that's made of something like masking tape, well, when you put that on there, when you go back later to take it off, there may be some residue on it. It can be cleaned up, but it's something to, uh, to think about as you're doing that. Another thing that I think is a drawback of the masks, some of them, is while they're designed to fit with a specific model generally. Sometimes they fit and sometimes they don't. There have been times that I bought a commercial canopy mask that was designed for the particular model I was building and when I would peel it off and try and put it on it just didn't fit. It might be too small, it might be too big, it might just be a one, along one edge or the whole thing. And that can be kind of a downer when you've spent the money on it and you realize, well, now I'm back to having to cut off pieces of this to make it work. Now, another sticky method that I've used a lot, but it's a little different than using tape or things like that, is using masking fluid. Now, this is a fluid that it can be made from a variety of materials, but the basic idea is you paint it on, it dries, it masks things off, and then you paint it and you remove it. It's not something you put on and cut away. I've tried it. It can work in some cases, but it doesn't work well as a cutaway method in my opinion. It works best as a paint it on carefully and make sure it goes where you want method and then paint it. It can be really easy to use because you're just painting, but that's also one of the drawbacks. If you're not real comfortable with precision painting, then it can be a little difficult to get it exactly like you want it. It's good stuff, but if, if brush painting is something that challenges you, challenges you, cha ch this hard for you, kind of like speaking, then, then maybe you want to use one of the other methods. Now, another couple of methods I want to talk about are what I call the non-sticky methods. Um, one is to simply paint the canopy by hand with acrylic paint. Don't worry about masking it. Don't do anything like that. Just paint it with acrylic paint. It's very important to use acrylic paint. The reason being is once you get it painted on, and don't worry about being too neat, once you get it painted on, you can simply take a toothpick and scrape away the excess. 
Now you have to be careful if you paint it on really thick because sometimes when you're scraping away the excess, it can pull paint from where you don't want it to be pulled. Sometimes you may have to make a little slice with a knife just to make sure you get a clean cut. But that one's super easy. It, it doesn't require any masking, just a little bit of cleanup work. Finally, another method, and this one, yeah, you stick it on, but I don't really consider it a sticky method, is to take either strips of painted tape or strips of decal paper or some kind of thing like that. And you cut the, the tape or the material and then you just apply it over the canopy framing. That can be a fairly easy way of doing it. It's a little tedious. It does work. The reason I'm not a real big fan of it is depending on what you're using, it may not hold up real well. It may be a little fragile. Um, if you're using, say, decals that you've printed out, sometimes getting a color match with your paint can be difficult. If you're using some kind of tape, uh, that can be difficult too because it may not stick down as well as you would like it to, you know, and, and there's nothing, there's nothing worse than having finished your model and you look at it and all of a sudden the canopy framing that you used painted tape uh, to, to, to make it look like it was painted pops up. Okay, so you have your canopy masking on. How do you get the stuff off? For all of those methods that I outlined above, I tend to just grab something as simple as a toothpick because that won't generally scrape the clear part, but it's sharp enough to pull up the masking. And I just take the end of it and I very carefully start in a corner uh, somewhere where there's like a 90 degree angle for the framing or something like that. And I just place the toothpick on the masking itself and just begin pushing it away. For most masks, that's going to start pulling them up. And you may have to work it a little bit. Uh, different masking methods are going to be easier or harder to pull up. But generally, using a toothpick is going to make it real easy to do so. Now, if you begin pulling up your canopy masking and the masking is pulling up some of the tape from the canopy frame, that's usually caused by having your paint a little too thick. What you can do there is just lightly go back with a new hobby blade and score through the edge of the canopy framing so that it makes a slice in the paint between where you want it to stay and where you want it to come up with the masking. And by making just a little slice there, you can generally pull it up successfully. Once I get all the masking up, what I usually do is just grab a dry Q-tip and just kind of buff out the clear part because that will usually clean any residue that's left behind. Now, if it doesn't, what I do then is I put just the tiniest drop of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and then I dab it off on a paper towel so that there's only just the barest amount on there. And then I carefully clean the clear canopy part because that will get most residue up. But you do have to avoid getting it on the paint because it may lift the paint also. So keep that in mind. Now the final craft tip that I want to talk about, um, it's simple, but it's one that's often overlooked. I know I do it all the time because I, I, I get impatient, is work slowly. That's the key to working with canopy framing uh, and masking is work slowly. You know, I, I actually like to consider that a single task. That's, that's what I'm gonna sit down to do today. Now, if I get it done and there's time to do other things, that's fine. But when I'm working on masking a canopy, I get my materials and I sit down and in my head, I'm thinking, this is the one thing I'm gonna do in this session. And I'm gonna take my time. I don't do it when I've gotta rush off to work or when I'm tired or anything like that. I, it's, it's something I focus on and I'm careful about because that's gonna give better results. I just wanna briefly go over some of the most common problems I see just to get them all in one list. I don't wanna elaborate on all of them because they should be fairly obvious, but the most common things I see, first off, is just heavy handedness. And by that, I mean, you, you're, you're, you're just kind of going at it like you're dry brushing a part. You know, when you're dry brushing something, it just tends to be blah, 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 you know. You're, you're just going at it. When it comes to canopy framing and masking, you really have to get in close. You have to work close. 
you've got to, you know, you don't hold your knife out here. You, you get it close into the blade. You're doing precision work. So s s smaller movements, more precise movements are what's required. Another thing, and I've, I've touched on this, but it's worth mentioning again, is use a new knife blade if you're doing one of the cutting methods. That's going to save you from so many problems once you get started in the work. A sharp knife is going to make a really clean cut as you're going through whatever masking uh, method you used. Another thing to keep in mind is burnishing. And what I mean by burnishing is just making sure the edges of the tape or the masking material that you're using are pushed down firmly against the surface, uh, both before you make any cuts and after. Because when you're making cuts, even with a new knife blade, some materials can lift up just a bit. You just have to go in there, and I usually use just my thumb or my thumbnail, and just push it down. Now the next two I kind of think of as one thing, even though they're two different points on my little list that I have over here. Um, one is lack of familiarity with the material. If you're using a material for the first time, if you have something you can practice on, that's going to help just to let you see how it reacts, how it works, um, uh, how, how you need to handle it. And going along with that is just lack of practice. Uh, like anything in this hobby, if you see somebody on YouTube or you read in a, a vlog or a blog or something like that, or somebody describes to you, here's how you do this. The first time you do it, it may not go as well as it will once you've done it 10 times. So don't always evaluate a method by the first application. It's going to take some familiarity with the materials and some practice to figure out what it is you like doing. Now, after having talked about all of these methods and the do's and the don'ts and all of that, you may be saying, okay, which one do you recommend? Well, as I said, I primarily use parafilm. That's my go-to method. However, I'm rarely one to, to advocate a single method for anything because different situations can require different methods. And each of these, uh, these, these types of canopy masking that I've talked about have advantages and disadvantages. And even though I like parafilm, there have been times that I've switched to other things. Like as I mentioned, when it comes to Warhammer, um, I actually like masking fluid for that or even freehanding it. There are times that certain shapes and configurations of canopy masking make using masking tape more advantageous. So find the one that you think is your preferred method, but try some of the others because as with anything, again, having multiple methods available to you that you're comfortable with is going to allow you to look at any project and evaluate it and decide which one is going to work best for this situation. Now a final point I want to bring up, and this is one that, that I, I think you have to always keep in mind, not only with this, but with any technique. Sometimes perfection is not achievable. Um, I'm very experienced with masking canopies. I don't have any fear of doing it. But on almost any canopy that I mask, if I really look close, I can find some little mistake that I made, some little error. It may be something that requires an optivizer and being an inch away from it. But perfection is not always possible. And in our hobby, if our goal is to have fun, then I think sometimes perfection is the wrong goal. Because uh, I've always heard it said in business that perfect is the enemy of good enough. So when you're doing your canopy masking, your clear part masking, don't get too frustrated if it's not perfect. Yeah, if there's a way of cleaning it up or doing it better or being more precise, pursue those. But if you look at it, and you hold it this close to your eye, and you're going, oh, I see this tiny little mistake there. Live with it. It's okay. It's just a hobby. Have fun. Well, I hope the things that I've talked about in this video have been helpful in some way to you as you consider what you're going to do for your clear part masking, your canopy masking. Um, and there are, I'm sure there are other methods 
that are used that I've not talked about. These are not the end all be all. And certainly the way I present it is not me saying, this is how it has to be done. I'm not the Mandalorian. It's not, this is the way. I'm just telling you this is a way. <laughs> so there are a lot of ways to get your canopy and your clear parts masked. So look for those, try different methods and see which one you like. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. If, if you're still watching at this point, I'm especially grateful because I see the analytics. I know people drop off in about the first three or four minutes. So if you're still watching at this point, thank you very much. There is a subscribe button down over here if you've not already clicked on that. There's also a little bell icon that lets you know when I have new videos out. So I would be most grateful if you would hit those two. And as I try to grow the channel, it would be so helpful to me if you would give this video a thumbs up and just drop a comment below. Um, that helps YouTube notice it. It helps it present it to more people. And it's just going to help me grow the channel. Now there's links down below to all the social media that I'm on, to my blog, and also to my Patreon page. Um, Patreon is what really keeps this channel going. I would model if it weren't for Patreon, but I couldn't do it at the pace that I do it with the materials that I do it if it weren't for that support. We just simply couldn't afford it. So if you would like to support the work that I do, please click on that link and just check out what's there. I thank you for your consideration. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much. It is a blessing to me. It is a blessing to my family. Because of your support, I'm able to do more than I could do otherwise. And I am so very grateful to all of you who support me. Thank you very much. And with all that being said, I'll close as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye. You ever ride around with your mask hanging off your face like this in your car and you're thinking you're looking like Tom Cruise and Top Gun, you know? Talk to me, Goose. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>